So good morning everybody to uh, morning prayer on Thursday in the week that is the third Sunday week after Trinity. Uh, this morning we're at All Saints as you see uh, and it's quite possible that we may all be able to return to All Saints mm -hmm. soon. soon. Um, we've just had a directive today from, uh, or yesterday, last night from the, um, from the Church of England um, and we're working out how we're going to be able to do that safely and uh, and also continue some of the online stuff because obviously there's a lot of you watching and a lot of our congregation who won't be able to come are still shielding and should be shielding and um, so we're going to continue our online stuff and um, somehow come back to church at the same time but anyway we'll get to that another time this morning's morning prayer if you're wanting to follow along at home um, the psalm set for day today is Psalm 78. Uh, it's a long psalm, 78. Please do read it all if you like. But set for today are verses 1 to 39. So 78 verses 1 to 39. And the Old Testament reading is from the book of Judges. It's chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. Judges 11, 1 to 11. And our New Testament reading, which we will hear in a moment, comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 19 to the end. So do read those ones at home and join us now as we start morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Thursday's canticle comes from Isaiah 42. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it. It gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind. To bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory, glory to, to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. <coughs> so we're going to have a reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 19 to the end. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gates lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, Remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things, but now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, 
They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Luke's Gospel, um, a lovely story. He um, writes his stories so well for us to understand. And on the face of it, it's uh, an easy story to understand. One between um, um, a bad man and a good man. One goes to heaven and one goes to hell. And it seems like quite simple. But there's so much depth in the story as there always is when Jesus tells his stories. Lazarus, uh, this poor man we, we don't know anything about him other than uh, he's a beggar and he sits every day in the same place outside the walls of um, this rich man's uh, lovely house where uh, we can imagine him um, dressed in his finery as we're told um, drinking wine enjoying his family around him perhaps they have a swimming pool you know you can imagine footballers wives kind of thing not a care in the world and I think that's probably the point, that uh, he hasn't a care in the world and he's living his best life. And he doesn't even notice this poor man outside his gates, the gates of his home, his life that he's made, that he's closed around him so nothing can get in. Um, and I think that's the very point of our story. And right mm. at the end it says, um, when, when he's burning in hell, he says, oh, just send this beggar, this Lazarus chappy, who I now have heard about, and send him to my family, because I love my family, I care about my family. Send him to warn everybody. And Abraham says, well, if they don't believe you, if they don't believe the prophets, they're not going to believe when a dead man rises from the dead. Um, and of course he's talking about Jesus. Does the world believe because they've seen Jesus? I don't think we see very much of that nowadays. No. It's, it's a very challenging passage because we're, we're there, aren't we? We live that yeah. you know, in, 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 in our society, and in a lot of society, in fact, in all societies really, um, there is that great division between the poor and the rich. And I think this is saying something about institutional poverty. It's that, that sort of acceptance of that way of life. We close, as you said, we, we put boundaries up around ourselves. We close our minds, we close our hearts, we close our lives to those around us. But there's something institutional about it as well. Um, where society, when society, when, and we're corporately, in the, as individuals together, accept that as a way of life and our being, then there's something deeply, deeply wrong with that, and we ought, and our responsibility is to try and change that. We can't all individually change the world, but we can individually do something about it in our own particular ways. Um, we were talking about this earlier, you know, um, we can't all, everybody, give up everything they have to make something good somewhere. Um, no, but we can each have our passion to change something or our passionate involvement in a cause or a charity or a, a, a particular um, person or people or, or whatever. Um, and, and, and that's good um, because if it's something that's changing or serving people or seeking a difference, then, then, then that's good. We can each do our part. Um, but to challenge the institutional separation of, of people and alienation of people and then yeah then it is it's political as well yeah. you know to what extent do we alienate the other in our institution in our attitudes in our politics in our countries mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a lot of echoes here um, and very challenging words from Jesus to us as individuals and as, and as Christians as communities and as a society and saying yes we each have to act in a way to change and recognise and respect and honour. Yeah, the other. So that, that institutional 
um, way that you're talking about, if we look at what's happening around the world at the moment in, in COVID, and um, I'm thinking of America um, and their, nas- their non-national health system, and, and it's fine. You know, there are a lot of people who, who think, well, we don't, we don't even think about those millions mm. that haven't got insurance for their, for their health care and they're mm. dying of COVID and, and many other diseases um, because I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to really guard that ourselves in this country with our NHS. Um, if, we, if there are moves to keep it, you know, some of us who can uh, afford things, will we think it's so bad? Mm. Do we walk past the homeless in the street and think, yeah, that's, well, that's normal for Southampton, isn't it, to see homeless people mm. on the street? Mm. It's not that, but you need to be passionate about a thing, yeah. at least a thing. I was thinking, just a little, and the way we operate things. I, some years ago, I visited a, a, a mill, a cotton project in Sri Lanka, in the mountains of Sri Lanka, and there they produce the, the most amazing cotton, beautiful, high quality cotton. Um, and I visited this, this village where they had a, a, a mill with, with several looms. Um, and a year and a half previously, these 12 looms had employed several women from the village and was producing high quality cotton um, that was being sold around Sri Lanka and sold to tourists and what have you. And when I was said these looms were all silent. The people had been made redundant. And why? Because the Americans had put taxes on the Sri Lankan cotton so that it couldn't, they couldn't afford to export. But the, the, the trade deals that they, they had meant that the American cotton, cotton was cotton. swamping the local market and was cheap. So everybody was buying American cotton, nobody was buying a high quality Sri Lankan cotton, and the local people, the villagers, had no work. Um, and so again, the rich countries were getting huge trade deals and huge benefits and crushing the poor in the process. So again, there's this whole institutional thing about how we live and how we deal um, and, and how we operate to benefit ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yes. Whether it's on an individual way or on a community way or on a national and international way. Mm-hmm. So I think what we're saying is there's so much to worry about in this world and, and it can be overwhelming. Mm. Um, we were talking about Facebook this morning and almost every single Facebook friend will have a passion that they're trying to interest you in and, and you, you can't take everything it's it you know you want to but you can't but as long as you're passionate about something and you care about something and as long as you're doing it faithfully um, I'm going to say you're going to go to the right place but you know it's not as clear cut as that but let's let's not be rich men who end up in Hades. Let's be, let's be Lazaruses and care and not confine ourselves in our happy and well-off homes, but think about others. Lots to think about in that reading and you can take that reading now and, uh, and think about it yourself. So let's pray. So in this week, our Father in heaven, we bring before you our prayers for your people everywhere, for your church and for all your people. Send your Holy Spirit to equip them and us with the gifts as are needed to serve you, to respond to the ways in which you can call us to challenge those things which cause injustices and inequalities in our communities and in our society. Help us to give a passion to make a difference where we are and in whatever way we can. We pray for our bishops, Timothy, David and Debbie, and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may serve your church in love and build up your people in trust and faith. And in truth, 
We pray for your church in every place and giving thanks for its witness and its life throughout the world and being a witness to hope and light of service, of love, of reconciliation in so many places. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for the peace and the well-being of the world in such a time of difficulty, not just of COVID, but of continuing conflicts. We pray for the continuing victims of violence and injustice, Continue to remember especially the people in Yemen, in Syria, South Sudan, and in other parts of the world where uh, so much is happening. Pray for the people of Lebanon and economic uncertainty there. We pray for justice and dealings with nations and peoples to look for the good, the well-being of other people and for seeking peace and looking to the needs of others. We pray for our Queen and for the leaders of nations that they may act with wisdom and with righteousness for the resolution of deep and bitter conflicts and to serve communities in these difficult and dangerous times. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, I'll pray. Lord, we pray for and give thanks for the communities of which we are a part, for those who keep them running in so many ordinary ways and those who we don't think about. We give thanks for the care workers and those in the health services. pray for our families and those close to us and all who need our time and our awareness, our attention and care. We pray for any who are weary from looking after those in need at this time, that you may give them strength and courage and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayer. And so, Lord, we offer before you those who are sick, those who are dying. We pray for those who are traumatised by war and injustice, physical and economic violence. We pray for healing. We pray for the transformation of policies and ways of life to bring hope. And we bring before you any individuals that we know. May your peace and your comfort and your grace rest upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayer. And Lord, we give you thanks for those who have died, those whom we've known and loved, who have inspired us in our journey of life and faith, for the saints in every age. We pray for those who have died recently, and for all who mourn for their loss. Grant us, O Lord, with them and with all the saints, a share in your eternal kingdom, and strengthen us for the service to which you call us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen.